Hello everyone, my name is Steve. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel this evening. Um, what I'm going to be demonstrating is a very simple program that was actually, you can find it in the Commodore 64 Programmer's Reference Guide. Um, it's actually a simple program. You may have seen it before. It's called the Dancing Mouse. You can already see I have a little sprite on the screen here. And I'm creating this video since I'm actually working on my website some more, and I'll show you here that I'm explaining a little bit more about how you create your own sprites and how this program works. This isn't the actual initial design. This is just a picture from the actual Commodore 64 system guide to kind of show you how the, the data is lined up and how it, you know, how it's calculated, although I probably just don't need that, that in here. But anyways, I wanted to show you the code is down here, of course, and I'll try to include a download link in here because people seem to like those. And I wanted to kind of run the program just to show you what it does and then we'll kind of break it apart. Now the original version has sound in it. I removed the sound just for simplicity at the moment. Did not make this too complex. But I wanted to demonstrate, you know, you can kind of see the sprite moving across the screen there. And eventually he'll go off the page there and we'll end. So here's the code, as you saw on the website here. If you go to the website, I'll explain a little bit better. I'll kind of break it down there for you. Um, in this section, um, I can stop this. I forgot which one's the break. It's that one. Let's see. Yeah, it's that one. Let me see here. I think you go like this. It's this one. That'd be this one. This escape key. Okay, so the escape key, I had to learn my way around here, is what breaks it. So, anyways, this line right here, this clears the screen. So, if you do a simple print, chr string 147 it'll clear your screen for you okay the next line here you see there's a variable here this is just setting to define uh, the sprite bit chip so we can start planning our sprite on the screen this actually enables the screen enables the screen enables the sprite so if I just do v plus 20 but one you can see the value 53269 and according to uh, the map in the Commodore 64 you can see that that's actually enables the sprite on um, and it brings it on the screen so to speak here and I'll, I'll run the program and show you how that one works here in just a second I wanted to kind of go over you know that section there so let's just run it again here and then we'll go into 53269 here wait till we get them on the screen here and then that's pretty good I guess stopping about right there and put 53269 set it to zero he'll disappear you set it to one the bits set to one again, so all the, the data is showing again. So that's what that line does. The next lines here, these read the sprite in the memory. And if you go further down here in the program, and you follow on the website here, this is all the data that creates up the sprite. It's made up of multiple frames. And I'll demonstrate that later to show you how that works, and, as well as some other techniques. And this is each um, animation frame. You have one, two, there's sort of three animation frames. The V plus 39, uh, that's the color. Yeah, that's the color. So we'll play with that one next. And then there also the next one next to it is V plus one, which is actually his, um, so let's just do this. Let's just uh, create the screen. What is this, 35? So we can kind of play with this. So V plus 39 comes 15 is, is going to have set in the white. You go in and you change these values, you'll see the sprite color starts to change to whatever value you stick in there. So that's the color. The next one here is the position. So if we change this, you'll see him move around. This is the, the vertical, so he should move down. There you go. We're moving farther down. You can set him all the way down. That's kind of off the screen there. Maybe set him to 210 or something. Uh, let's try 225. I want to get him like right below there. There you go. Kind of, he's kind of sticking below there now. That kind of positions him. You can also use um, just V plus to uh, position him over. You see how he kind of moved over now? Now he's over there. So go to the next section here. This is just basically printing on the screen. When you saw it run, it printed I am the dancer mouse toward the center because this is tabbing over 160 spaces. So if I change that, it could just position wherever you want it to be. 
this time you'll see it it'll be much farther it won't be centered though when it runs see it's kind of off centered there Oops. so the next section here this is what moves the sprite across the screen uh, this is important to be able to cross the body which is called the most significant byte we have to cross 255 pixels here because you can't go beyond 255 when reading from a memory location from 0 to 255 so to, to take initial to accomplish this trick we actually do what's called setting the most significant byte and memory location 53269 or is it no 53264 so we can flip him over the screen here and I'll, I'll demonstrate I'll run something and prove something to you here real quick wait till he gets moving there a little bit set him a little bit away so I think that's good so now we'll peek into 53 I think you can peek into these 53264 and you see a zero in there. Now if I go and set this to one, you'll see him shift over on the screen. You should. Right there, or it just disappears. Because basically right now the horizontal position is set differently. And here's what's going on. So if you go over here and you um, print 53248, you can see it's at 153. But if we set it back to zero, he should appear again. So now he's set at the most significant byte at the high byte on zero. So it kind of just starts over again. And as you move this over, you'll see him move in that direction. So we're moving maybe at 40 or something. You see, I moved over there. Now, if I go in and set this out a bit back, you'll see him flip off the screen because he's already off the screen at this time. Or, he, or he's positioned back on the screen. So just think of this from 0 to 255. Reset this most significant bit, and you kind of start over again at horizontal positions. That's essentially how that works. Everything else is just kind of doing the same thing here. Uh, v plus 16, this is was the location I just read to you was the... Uh, 53264, and that's what switches them on to 2040. This changes the shape data, so let me show that to you. And this is just reading in 192, 193, 194, and this is just cycling through all those aeration frames and storing them in the shape data. So let's look at that next, which is lines 80, I like keep track there, 80 through 85. Okay. Like that. So if we poke 2040, now you can't just put any funny value. If you do, you're going to get some garbage on the screen. That's because what it's doing, and let me demonstrate it this way. It's actually taking 2 times 64 and defining what's in memory location times 64. Where's the pasture? Right there. So it's 128. So it, there's nothing important. And you can't store data in 128. It's not used for shifting data. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put this at 192. You'll see the sprite appear again. And I'll go over and I'll change this 192 times 64 to show you. And you'll see 12288, which is exactly where all those header lines started. I think it was line, I got it here in my book. Line 20. Yeah, right there, 12288. And you can see that's exactly where it starts it. So that starts reading in the, the data from memory. And if you peek into 128, you can kind of see it too. What is into it. You probably won't see anything in this location. Yeah, the were 30. And if you go down to this line to demonstrate, which is line 100, I think. 100. We'll move over there a little bit. And I'll go back up here and I'll show you how it's, it's moving through memory. So you see there's a 30 here. We, we read 30 into this memory location. You read the next one, it's got a 0 because there's a 0 here. If you read the next one, it'll have the 120 in it and so on. That's basically how it's doing. It's, it's reading in that sprite data. And it's reading it into the, the sprite shape data so we can see it on the screen, so to speak. Changes to 193, and I'll move him over a little bit here. Excuse me if I'm going too fast. I'm just trying to um, make this as easy as possible for people. Oops. Get my arrow keys right. So we'll move him over to 100 or something like that. Yeah, a little bit a little further, I guess. One fifty should do it. Okay, that's pretty centered. And then here, now that we have them over, we're going to go ahead and switch out his animation frame some more. You see how you shift it again? Two. You can see all the animation frames are three of them. And they're just basically salt simultaneously incrementing through those very quickly to get the movement. Now you see that's nothing in there because we didn't define that area. And there's nothing there because we didn't define that area. And so on. Yep, so that's how you get the uh, sprite.
Now, other things not actually seen in this is the vertical expansion. I'll go over that here real quickly. It's actually a memory location 53271. And we need to find our sprite, which is sprite 1. So we set bit 1 to it. And it should expand him. There you go. And now we're going to expand him vertically. I mean, we did vertically. Let's do horizontally since I can remember where it is. I do not have these memorized. Let's see, horizontal, light 10. I think it was 53, 75, or something like that. Let's see. You have to pause here a second. Multi color. There it is. 53277. So, over here. And we plug 53277. He'll expand again. So now we got a gigantic. And if you set this back, you'll see this flip back vertically. And then this will flip him back to normal. So that's that. Uh, pretty much that's all you can really do is you can move this sprite around. You can change the colors. Uh, we won't go into multicolor because I didn't create a multicolor map. This one doesn't have an example. So this is not a multicolor example. There's an example on my website where you can see the multicolor. Maybe I'll put that on the website too so you can kind of learn from it. But I think that's pretty much it. And everything else is just a matter of changing the bits and the sprite and stuff like that. So if you go and you change this data here, you can change the mouse. As long as we're pointing to the right one here. So I'll just, as an example, I'll go in here and I'll just um, change this to something different, like 255. And then we'll need to define the correct shaping area for the sprite. So what we'll do down here, we'll do puck 2040, I think it's 192. There you go. So you see it drew a kind of line at the top of the screen. That's what that 255 did. If you erase it, you'll see it go away. Basically, that's just defining where the sprite's at. If you change this to something, you'll see it change again. Then that's kind of in the center of it. So that's kind of how that all works. I hope you guys enjoyed this little example. Um, please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, that's basically what it is. I just created a simple video just to kind of um, demonstrate how, you know, how to create your own little example using a simple sprite, you know, tutorial here. So I hope this was um, enlightening to you, and um, look forward to more things on the website, programmermind.com, and you guys have a good night or a good day.